A crisp 20. Ellen Opengate stared at the notice. It read, Bank robbing is my passion. If it's yours, looking for assistant, apply within. It was attached to a curtainless old storefront window. Next to it was an equally old wooden front door. Helen peered inside, uncertain of what exactly to do. She made her living by working through a temp agency who assigned her as a fill-in for workers who were temporarily absent. It must be a joke, she thought. Someone is playing a joke by putting this notice on the window. I'll just let the owner know. Jobs had been few and far between recently. That and the growing realization that none of these firms were ever going to hire her full time. That was probably lodged in her mind also. She tapped on the door and watched someone enter the room from the rear and headed towards her. The door didn't open, just a voice could be heard from a small speaker. Come in. She turned the knob, pushed the door, and opened it. A man, mid-sixty-ish, gray beard, bespeckled, looked her up and down. Put your bag on the floor beside you, he directed. Acting against her better judgment, she complied. He came nearer. I can't be too careful. After all, you might be here to rob me, given your predilection. Oh, pardon me. I don't want to give you the wrong impression. I actually just stopped in to say someone must be playing a joke on you. The sign? She weakly pointed at it. The man didn't even look towards the window. You'll do. He circled around her. You'll do nicely. He said more to himself than her. I wonder why I haven't thought of that earlier. Pardon me, but what haven't you thought about before? Are you familiar with firearms? This question, being so open-ended that it could be interpreted in a number of different ways, caused Ellen Opengate to pause. I? She stumbled a bit. Not too much. Never mind. It probably won't come to that. Explosives? I believe I am not the person you are looking for. I mean, if you honestly think I'm a bank robber, I pay my taxes even when I don't agree with them. I seldom even ever jaywalk. That's just it. You seldom jaywalk. Means once in a while you do. My name is Pencils. Charles Pencils. He held out his hand. And you are? Ellen Opengate. Ellen, the job is yours if you want it. Starts tomorrow morning. Be here at nine sharp. There was something about the person named Pencils using the word sharp that for a semi-second amused Ellen. But she didn't let it show. She found herself outside again as quickly as she had entered. On the hard sidewalk. She thought, how nice it would be to afford a bus pass. Now safely outside, she began once again to experience a dull, familiar ache in her feet. Mm. She mused, Ellen Opengate, bank robber. It kind of has a nice ring to it. Joe's cafe was a half a block away and one block over. Fingering for change in her purse, past pens, a small notebook, case for her glasses, brush, pocket novel, and assorted other small items, she managed to dredge up enough for a coffee and a blueberry muffin. Joe's Cafe wasn't fancy, but it was the kind of place you could hunker down over a coffee in a paperback novel for an hour and maybe even get a free refill. Ellen Opengate, bank robber. I could have business cards made up handing them out to only the very discreet, the same sort of people who knew and kept the identity of the Scarlet Pimpernickel safe. To Mr. Charles Pencils, the situation was quite clear. You don't have to do much to get someone enlisted. Just appeal to their baser instincts. It's really very simple. You only have to dangle a web in front of a spider once, he thought. Nine o'clock next morning, found Ellen outside the wooden door again. Is this real? Am I going nuts? I'm not going to rob any banks, I can tell you that. Looking at the window, she noticed the sign was gone. A now familiar voice came through the small speaker. Come in, Ellen. I've been expecting you. A shiver went through her spine. Thoughts flooded her mind. It's now or never, they declared. Turn back while you still can. You don't know what's on the other side of the door. You only know what's on this side. Look before you leap. She reached for the doorknob, turned it to the right, and entered. This time the procedure changed. Empty the contents of your bag on the table, then pass it to me, so I can confirm it's empty. The tabletop quickly filled up with pens, notebook, brush, chiclets, loose change, pocket novels, lipsticks, and money. Mr. Pencils rifled through the bag, and then looked into the various side pockets. 
Great, if you could just make a list of these contents, that would be most helpful. Then I want to go to the bank. You want to go to the bank? Yes, this morning. You aren't going to rob it, are you? Oh no, you are. See, truth is, even though it always been a dream of mine to knock off a bank, I never held up a bank in real life. But I always wondered what it would be like, and if I could get away with it. I think it's a simple thing. I really do. The less complicated your procedure, the better off you'll be. You've had the experience. You applied for the job. The least you could do is help me develop my approach. I would be willing to go to the bank with you, even take the lead. I don't want to be bogged down in needless details. Just answer me one thing. If you were to rob a bank, how would you go about doing it? Ellen found herself thinking that this is a simple enough request. She was even entertaining the idea. I don't know, but perhaps if you showed me what your approach would be, I might be able to critique it to steer you in the right direction, keep you on track. Let's use this desk. I'll be the teller on this side, and you approach me as if to rob me. Stick em up. No, that won't do. As soon as one of the teller raises their arms, everyone, staff and customers alike, will immediately know what's going on. This is a hold-up. No, it draws too much attention to yourself. What about a written note? I like that better. Of course, what is written is important. You want something short and to the point. If it were written on the back of a real check, then it would look like you're simply passing them one. A check, huh? What else you got for me? Well, it occurs to me since this is your dream of robbing a bank... What would make you happy? Do you want to empty the vault and drain every last penny out of the place? Or would you be happy with getting away with slightly less than, say, 5,000? First time offense for 5,000 or under is a sentence of just two years. And if they never recover the money, all the better. It's not so much the money. It's the adventure. It's in the chase. It's the ability to pull it off. But if there were a way of making 5,000 disappear, now that would be something to brag about. Ellen now experienced a strange twist of events turning in her mind, moving from once impossible to the only slightly probable, to find herself left in the end with a definite feeling of possibility. I believe that can be arranged. The plan was simple the way Charles Pencils wanted it. He would go into the bank, join the lineup waiting to see a teller. Ellen would be next in the line behind him. When he made it to the counter, he would hand the teller his note with a demand for $5,000. After the money had exchanged hands, Charles would place it in a bag furnished for that purpose. Ellen would then not so accidentally, lose her footing, crashing into the back of him. He would turn around, now facing Ellen, and become enraged, yelling at her and everyone else to get out of the bank while quickly exchanging the bag of money for an identical bag filled with paper from a paper shredder which Ellen had carried in with her. She would then rush out of the bank with the other customers, pushing them along if necessary to create a panic taking the money with her, and he would be left in the bank holding the empty bag. Charles Pencils listened to her rendition of this description. Left holding the bag, huh? You have all the money. I get nabbed for attempted robbery, or to be more precise, robbery. Nothing attempted about it. How do I know you and the money just won't disappear? There is no honor among among thieves, and while we're at it, let's forget any illusions about trust also. Now you're even sounding like a criminal. Charles grinned in spite of himself. I am, am I not? I mean, I am, ain't I, sister? Besides, you know where the money went. You could just tell the cops, see, it's a two-way street. Later that day, after the whole affair went down, Ellen found herself at Joe's Cafe once again. It's a coffee and a blueberry muffin for me, she told Joe as she pushed him a crisp $20 bill. Then choosing a booth, she slid in and was having her first cup of hot coffee when another customer rushed by. Hey, have you heard the news? The bank's been held up. What bank? The one two blocks over on Holland. Who'd have thought? I mean in broad daylight too. That takes some shitspa. 
Now, if it had been me, I would have waited until dark. Why? You ever thought about pulling off a heist before? No, no. I'm just saying that took some shit spot, is all. Helen smiled in her booth. Old Joe eyed the new customer. Wham it! I haven't seen you in a while. What's your poison? Well, truth be told, I could murder for a coffee. Coming right up. The end.